Now joining me on the broadcast is uh, Bihar BJP General Secretary and member of the Bihar Legislative Council, Devesh Kumar. Mr. Kumar, thank you for joining us on the broadcast. My first question, amid the scandal that has rocked the Mahagat Bandhan government, the Mahagat Bandhan 2.0 government in Bihar, is that the court ordered the surrender of Karthike Singh on the 16th of August. Now on the same day, the law minister took the oath of office. Can the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar make the defence that he was not aware? Uh, certainly not. Mr. Nitish Kumar cannot take the plea that he was not aware. Every chief minister before the swearing-in exercise does some due diligence, does some groundwork on the ministers being sworn in. Every They uh, ask the special branch and the CID to uh, submit reports on the criminal antecedents of each and every uh, minister in waiting. So Mr. Nitish Kumar cannot take the plea and these, uh, you know, the uh, record, the criminal records of each and every person, they are all available on the affidavits. They are all open to people. So Mr. Nitish Kumar cannot take the plea that he was not aware. He is making a mockery of governance. He is making a travesty of justice. Right. Now, Mr. Kumar, 11 of the 17 RJD ministers have serious criminal cases against them. Now, can Nitish Kumar's Sushasan Babu tag survive in Mahagadbadan 2.0. Now remember, the alliance of the BJP and the JDU was on good governance, but with the RJD, can that tag survive? Certainly not. Uh, I would say Mr. Nitish Kumar is Ku Sashan Babu mm -hmm. because as many as 12, not 11, 12 of the new minister, newly appointed ministers have criminal background. They have criminal cases pending against them. And we are returning to the pre-2005 era when the RJD ruled the roost and, uh, you know, abductions, rapes, uh, murders, uh, decoities, they had become the order of the day in uh, Bihar. There was an abduction spree and which uh, led to several movies being uh, shot in Bihar on the theme of abduction, on the theme of I remember a movie which, by the name of Aparan, which was directed by Mr. Prakash Jha. So, an industry, kidnapping, abductions, they had become an industry. So, and Biharis had become the butt of so many jokes outside Bihar. So, we are seeing a return to the pre-2005 days when uh, criminals ruled the roost and, you know, parents of uh, daughters, they were uh, worried of sending their children outside uh, uh, their houses, outside their homes after a certain point of time. So there is, uh, you know, the fear of the rule of law is gone. And there's an, in, in fact, if you go through the newspapers every morning, they are full of reports of cases of murders, decoities, abductions, you know, uh, banks being looted. So we, I am afraid, we are seeing, and it, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's ironical because Mr. Nitish Kumar came to power on the promise of providing go, good governance, but he has made compromises in order to stay on, to cling on to power with those very elements which uh, lent Bihar a bad name in the pre-2005 era. Now, Mr. Kumar, uh, Nitish Kumar has obviously switched sides multiple times between your party and the RJD. But after this latest switch where he's joined hands with Tejasvi Yadav, are the BJP's doors now completely shut to Nitish Kumar? This call has to be taken by the BJP central leadership. But as things stand today, uh, I would say that uh, the BJP has decided to go it alone in the upcoming elections to the Lok Sabha and the Bihar State Assembly. Uh, it would be better for us uh, to uh, go it alone rather than, you know, make compromises with a person whose only uh, and a sole ambition is to cling on to power somehow, any which way you can. So uh, we will uh, have to struggle. It's a long haul ahead. But the BJP has taken a call that we will, uh, uh, you know, strengthen our organizational base and plug all the organizational loopholes, which, if the, which there are, if any. Right.
And my final question, Mr. Kumar, has Nitish Kumar's exit been actually a blessing in disguise for the BJP ahead of the Lok Sabha elections and the state elections which take place in 2025? It certainly is a blessing in disguise. As I said, the party, uh, we already have a very strong organizational base in Bihar. Uh, if you have been reading newspaper reports, uh, and I'm sure many newspaper channels had covered, uh, last month, uh, we held a big congregation. Uh, uh, we had a joint meeting of all our uh, mochas. And we sent as many as uh, four, almost uh, 300 representatives, uh, members of these uh, mochas, to 200 assembly segments for two consecutive days. And they were given a questionnaire which they had to, uh, you know, uh, 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 which they had to fulfill by meeting people after meeting people. And this was a good exercise. We sent uh, representatives to 200 assembly segments and the results are very satisfying. So, uh, and also you should also remember fa the fact that out of 72,000 booths, 72,000 odd booths in Bihar, we have our booth committees in as many, as much, as many as uh, 63,000. So we have a very strong organizational base our aim is to become a Sarvasparshi, Samaveshi and Sarvavyapi organization which encompasses all sections of the society, all segments of the society and uh, so that we can, you know, uh, go ahead with uh, the slogan raised by Honorable Prime Minister of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, Sabka Prayas. Right. Thank you, Mr. Devesh Kumar, for joining us on the broadcast and giving us the BJP's perspective uh, when it comes to the political dynamics in Bihar. So, 